Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the layout. This is Dan here, and this is going to be the first edition of my how-to weathering videos. And uh, for my first video, I'm going to be starting with a relatively easy car, a covered hopper, and in this particular case, a uh, ACF Centerflow hopper. And um, what I'm going to be doing is basically going over a few techniques and showing you in detail how I weather a car. We'll even do some graffiti, and then I'll even show you uh, um, some techniques on safety stripes, uh, since I plan on making this a modernized model. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and start with hoppers, and in the next video I'll be discussing tank cars, and uh, hopefully we'll get into some gondolas and box cars later on, but at the moment I don't really have anything to show uh, for those, so when I get some more models I'll make those videos, but uh, for now... I got an Atlas uh, hopper here that I'm going to be weathering and I'll go ahead and show you a few techniques and stuff uh, pretty basic stuff um, it's it's really not that hard and my particular advice uh, to go ahead and start is prototype photos um, that's one of the best ways to weather a model in my opinion if you can find uh, prototype photos of a modern piece of rolling stock like this it helps because you have the ability to look, um, observe the photos um, for one so you can see you know how dirty the car is um, you know if there's graffiti a placement of safety stripes for example uh, etc it's really helpful when modeling a or weathering a modern car like this now I, I do find it a little challenging going back say to the era of like the 80s um, even in a few cases of the 90s that uh, since everything back then uh, people didn't photograph rail cars as much back then but you know now that we're living in the modern era where everything's digital you can just basically plug a memory card into the computer and you can upload a photo in less than a minute um, everybody just uh, clicked away when they would see a rail car uh, so we have numerous photos of rail cars now and that's the upside about modernized rolling stock is that you can pretty much find photos there are plenty of photos for just one car in particular, but older cars like that it's kind of hard because most people didn't really take pictures of rolling stock back then. So uh, that's my first bit of advice before we get started, is try to find prototype photos of the model you're going to be working on. And since I have a modern hopper here, I've been able to pull up some photos of the real FPCX uh, 750. So I'm going to be using those as reference uh, when weathering this model. So I'll go ahead and show you some of the materials and uh, that I'll be using for this project. Okay, so we'll be looking at my weapon of choice here for weathering. Uh, my favorite, weathering acrylics. And these are just regular acrylics you can get at a craft store. Uh, pretty cheap too. I got these uh, particular bottles for about uh, 75 cents a bottle. Actually less than that, probably more closer to 50, uh, 53 or 54 cents. And I get mine at Hobby Lobby. Uh, since I live uh, pretty close to a Hobby Lobby, I usually just run and get my paints there. Um, uh, I know Walmart and uh, Meyer can carry acrylics too, but really not in much variety. So I recommend if you're going to get paints uh, to go into an actual store like Hobby Lobby or a Hobby Store where you can find these in bulk so you can get more colors and stuff uh, for weathering. So my, per my uh, personal preference for weathering to go ahead and start here. Um, these are the two basic colors you're going to want for weathering. I have an earth brown color here and black. These are my favorite colors for weathering models. Um, what you can do in, in most cases is combine the two and you can basically alter whether you want a heavy shade of brown or a little darker uh, weathering and these are great for the underbodies of rail cars and locomotives um, making a rust batch or stuff and um, stuff like that these are my two favorite uh, favorites for that and this is basically my base coat of weathering is these two right here um, my favorite uh, going into more detail like say rust spots or anything like that I will also uh, sometimes combine the two but usually I'll stick to my earth brown for rust spots and um, sometimes you can go back and add a little black to the center dot of a rust spot uh, right when it's streaking down 
I like to mix the two together for rust spots. So that's another idea with these two that I like. Um, I have some uh, Americana acrylic separate from Anita's acrylic, which is I, which is what I prefer. Uh, and this Jack Lantern, Lantern Orange is what I used for heavy rust. Uh, also for say brand new wheels, where the new wheels that they install on a, uh, a rail car are bright orange rust color. This is what I use this for. Also, it can be for areas of patches of fresh rust. Um, so this is really good for that too. And on this particular model, I'll be using this, uh, as you'll see. So I have this as well, and this is actually my favorite rust tone here. But there's multiple rust tones actually out there. Uh, it's just a matter of preference. Even where you live, trying to find the best uh, weathering colors, that's a big thing you got to remember. Um, when it comes to paint and weathering on rail cars, um, it depends on, your, on the climate. Uh, basically where out in the Midwest you get really kind of dusty you get out into the plains, mountains, etc. So you see more over dust uh, on, on rail cars and locomotives and then you get out here where I live around Ohio in that area and into Canada you see a lot more heavy grime and rust uh, especially in Canada. Canada is big on grime and rust. If you have ever seen some of their engines or rail cars, they're usually very dirty just because of the climate. So that's another thing. Depending on where you live or the era and where you model, that should be also taken into consideration. That way you can kind of more over accurately weather your rail cars. Um, so back onto the paints themselves. To finish up, I have Anita's bulk white acrylic. I have this in a bigger bottle be uh, simply because I use this more uh, than any other color. And this is what I consider my highlights. Um, and it can also be used, I like this for like cement lathe, uh, grain spill, anything like that. But back to highlights, what this does is you can, it basically makes small details on trucks and couplers pop out. And as you'll see, it's a great technique um, that helps. After you've, you've weathered the trucks, for example, you can go over them with a, a heavy brush and you can just lighten them up. Uh, so that's nice. So these are what I'm going to be using for this car. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you some brushes that I'll also be using. So here are my favorite brushes for weathering. As you can see, i got a wide variety. i got my heavy weathering brushes like these for heavy streakage, rust, etc. This is my brush for highlights. Uh, this is for more detail weathering. Uh, this is for like rust patches. And then this is my finer brush for rust spots, even graffiti. And then this is what I prefer for uh, wheel weathering here. So, again I'll go over this in a little more detail, but uh, I won't try to take up too much time with this. These are my heavy weathering brushes. And what you're trying to achieve with these is the, if you're going over the entire body of the car, this is what I prefer. Uh, they do, they make quick work of everything. Um, they're really good uh, for streakage, especially rust streakage. And then going into the highlights of the car, I have this uh, softer brush here, which is really nice for this. And then I also use this for load spill sometimes, um, but usually I prefer smaller brushes for that. But this is for highlighting. And again, you'll see that uh, a little later in the video, uh, near the final stages of the weathering process. And as we get into the smaller brushes, I'll just show them all here. Uh, these brushes right here are what I use for the uh, more smaller patches, areas of weathering, say underbody, around the truck bolsters, around bays of hoppers, uh, around the roof walks, stuff like that um, is what I prefer these for. You can also use these on the sides of the car as well. It's a little more controlled, but uh, for the most part I use these for smaller areas. You can see like that's for heavier areas around the truck bolsters, for example. And then if you get into smaller compact areas like around hatches and stuff, you can use the smaller brush. And these are both uh, relatively stiff brushes, uh, so I prefer these for my weathering in small patches. Now getting into uh, even smaller areas, I have this uh, fine brush here, uh, and this is going to be used for the wheel weathering, weathering the wheel faces 
of the trucks. And then to finish off, I have my very, very ultra fine brush here. And if the camera will focus, I'm so I apologize. Come on. Well, anyways, if you can see it, um, this is what I use for rust spots. And uh, even graffiti uh, is what I prefer because it has a fine tip, which is nice for that. So you have a lot more control with uh, where your paint's going. And you'll also, you'll, uh, with all these brushes, you'll be seeing all of them in use for this project. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and get into this. Alright, so the areas I'll be focusing on first on this model are the uh, areas around the hatches, coming down underneath the roof walks on the top sole of the car, and then the streakage down the sides of the car is where I'll be uh, focusing on first. And then I'll be moving on to the underbody of the car, and then I'll be going in, in the final stages, detail weathering, rust spots, uh, rust streaks, stuff like that. Um, so the first thing I'll do is the top of the hatch and I'll go ahead and get a, bait, uh, a paint match uh, a paint batch mixed together uh, over here alright so I have a piece of paper here for my paints and I just I just use an old scrap piece of paper for this I'm not really it's better anyway since you're it's just a piece of paper I would have shredded anyways so it's great for recycling for this kind of usage so I'll go ahead and add a little black that's actually more than enough right there. Black's a pretty powerful color, so you kind of got to go easy on it. And then I'll take my earth brown and put a little bl uh, a little blob there. So that should be actually just enough for this project. Um, and then I'll go ahead and mix them together. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my uh, <clears throat> my uh, kind of my one of my finer brushes. So I can work around the hatches of the car. And I'm just going to take a little bit like this. And I'm just going to kind of mix the two together. Uh, like this. Get a little more black. Wipe a little bit off. Uh, I'm kind of trying to dry brush this so it's not too heavy. But still try to get enough weathering on there. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and work this around the hatches of the car. Uh, kind of like this, uh, just kind of trying to blend it in a little. I'm actually going to try to take my finger like this because I kind of want to keep it around the hatches. I kind of like this effect, but what I'm just using my finger here, by the way. But preferably, you want to use, like, say, a wet paper towel, just so you can kind of wipe the areas off but keep the areas around the hatches dirty so it looks like after the rain washes all the dirt and grime up top kind of builds around the hatches that's what I'm trying to achieve here and then you kind of streak it up just a little kind of like that you can see it's not too heavy but uh, it does look a lot better um, so I'll go ahead and move down here a little and basically do the same thing just kind of hit up the areas, especially around the roof walks, where it's going to kind of drip down. And I'll actually add some heavier patches to this in a second, but you can see what I'm trying to do here at the moment. Just kind of trying to add these effects around the hatches. And then you go back and you add the detail weathering, just kind of streaking it out just a little. And I'll probably actually add a little bit heavier patch here, since I'll probably do a bit of streakage here. Around. So I'm going to kind of try to build it up a little around this hatch. And don't worry about the uh, roof walks. I'll take care of that in a minute, uh, since I kind of want to weather those anyways. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to try to fan this out. <clears throat> kind of spread it out a little. I'm going to try to clean these roof walks off a little. I'll actually probably go back with a Q-tip and uh, clean that up in a minute. But I'm just going to try to fan this out a little bit. There we go. That looks a lot better. 
So you basically see what I'm, I'm doing here. You can see that, uh, that's just what I'm trying to achieve. And this car is not that dirty. Um, but if you're if it's a really dirty car, uh, for example, a really I mean, a few of these center flows do get pretty dirty, but this one in the photo stayed relatively clean, so I'm not trying to go for too heavy of an effect here. Again, I'll just kind of hit these areas back. I might actually go back and add a little rust to that patch there in a minute. Um, kind of got to be careful. One last thing before I edit this um, is the roof locks being at their photo etched metal. You kind of got to be careful with that because if you press down on it too hard, you can dent the metal, which... Um, actually it wouldn't be too too bad if you think about it because I have seen these um, roof walks dented up a little in between the uh, seams so it wouldn't be unrealistic but you just kinda generally want to try to avoid that so you can see even just how much paint I've already used how little it takes to weather the roof walks you can see just that little bit did all that so you can see that it really doesn't take that much paint to do this um, so I'm just going to finish up these roof walks and then we'll move on to the other areas. Alright, so you can see that the roof walks are weathered and I pretty much got the entire top weathered at a consistency I want. And one last little detail thing I'm going to do on the roof here is I'm going to go ahead and add the rust to this little patch here uh, with a finer brush, as you can see. I'm just going to take a little bit of my uh, er earth brown and I'm going to kind of try to build it up a little bit around the hatch and the roof walk kinda of coming down between the hatch here Get a little more paint Go ahead and move on to the other side real, real quick. So that looks really, really good. And um, one last little thing you can also do to this, because a lot of times the hatches on these cars uh, get replaced, you can actually add a replacement hatch back here and I'm just gonna take some more earth brown and I'm gonna repaint this hatch here uh, right this one with a little, just a little bit of brown just to kinda give it a mix make it look like the hatch might have been replaced or even still, this could have been maybe uh, the original hatch on the car and the rest were replaced. Uh, you never know. And I can see a little bit kind of went over, but that's alright. We'll just take a Q-tip and clean that up in a minute. Kind of try to pick it up a little. There we go. And along the lines of replacement hatches, I'm actually going to take another shade of, ba of uh, gray. You can see I mixed this batch just in the cap of my uh, paint bottle. And I'm going to paint a few more of these hatches. Uh, just to kind of add some variety. There we go. So that's looking really, really good. And we'll go ahead and move on to the sides of the car. And then this top sill here, we'll kind of bring it down and streak it down with our larger brushes here. So I'm going to take uh, some rust brown just to act, uh, add a little bit of a natural rust look to the sides of this car. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the rust, streak it down kind of rough, and then I'm going to take a paper towel, wet it down in a, a little area, and I'm going to go over the sides of the car to kind of try to build up the weathering around the seams of the panels on the side of this car. So you'll see this 
basically in a minute. I'm just going to do this one section to save time, uh, just to kind of give you an example of what I'm doing here. You just apply it rough like this, and then you simply uh, <clears throat> take a wet paper towel, and I just dip this in a little water, by the way, and then you just go like this. Give it a little bit more. Kind of even builds around the seam too, which is nice. You can see what that does with this. Yeah, if you can see that. I'll take my uh, camera actually off the tripod a little. If I can get it on, on loose. So that's basically what it creates. That looks really good. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much the idea behind this is the technique. You can see you got a little bit of streakage and build up around the sills of the car at the top and then down, but you can also see that those highlights um, brought out the detail of the seams between each individual panel of the car, and you can see that it's really, really nicely detailed right now, and it looks really, really good. Now, to make this look better, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our earth brown and we're going to kind of enhance it and finish off the side with a little bit of dry brushing and I'm just going to take the straight earth brown and I'm going to dry brush it like so kind of around these areas here is where I'm aiming for and then you just kind of streak it down a little sort of like that and just kind of random areas wherever I'm not trying to go too heavy on this again, uh, simply because the car is not that dirty. But, uh, you know, just a few areas like this where it counts. Kind of try to keep it clean though. I don't want to over weather it. And then I'm going to try to streak it down here at the base of the car where that patch of rust is. As you can see. So that's. That's pretty much it. You can see how it looks. You can see all that rust and everything. That's just a technique I like to do with these hoppers. In particular if they have these seams, it really helps to enhance the detail. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the top here and work in the uh, top sill here. Uh, for the next part of this weathering project. Alright, so I'm just going to hit the kind of just the top here uh, where it's going to count. The dirtiest part is going to be at the top, so with just a little more of my earth brown, I'm just going to kind of uh, try to build up the rest of these panels real softly. I'm going to try to get it as as possible like that. I'm going to try to bring it down. That was a little bit heavier coat, but that's alright. Kind of needed that. I'm going to get the back end here, kind of work it around. So that's looking really good. I'm going to kind of try to work in this area here. Around this little piece here. Again, trying to kind of streak it down. Cut that off. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to dab it on right now, uh, just so it covers more quicker and a little more evenly. I'm gonna hit the end. I'm gonna get this little panel here. Get working it down. I'm trying to keep in the motion that it's going downwards. You got to try to keep that in mind. Um, so again, that's what I'm doing here, and I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, this other end here. Uh, just to save time, I'm not going to show that, uh, because you already see what I'm doing here. Uh, it's just a, you know, again, just a technique of kind of blotching it on and then streaking it down. So uh, I'll show you this when it's done. Alright, so as you can see on the model, I've went ahead and uh, weathered the roof, and you can see that there's just some very light streakage coming down, and that's exactly the look I was trying to achieve. You can see it's not 
extremely dirty, but it still has that sense of old, kind of trying to show off that it's still a relatively old car, aged a little. Um, so I really like the, the technique. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go on to the other side and basically do the exact same thing. And then after that we're going to go ahead and move on to the ends and then the trucks and uh, undercarriage.